I know of a loose little mark quite near here. Let's go there and talk of your other c conquests. Thank you for <laughs> Not quite your milieu, my dear, but mine, I assure you. After all, you have been in your milieu all day. I was given the address by a dirty old man in the birth sur le soir. I'm most grateful to him. I've been out of England so long, and really, sympathetic little joints like this change so fast. I presented myself here for, for the first time yesterday evening, and already I feel quite at home. Good evening, Cyril. Now, Tony, back again? Can't keep away, my dear. What you have in there? Well, what would you like, Charles? A gin and dragon. Uh, two of those, please. Huh? Hello, Tony. Uh, good evening. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Uh, do you know Mr. Charles Ryder, uh, the artist? Pleased to meet you. How do you do? Uh, thank you. We'll take our drinks and sit down. You must remember, my dear, that here you are just as conspicuous and, may I say, abnormal, my dear, as I should be in Bratz. Love. Would your friend care to rumble? No, Tom, he would not, and I'm not going to give you a drink. Not yet, anyway. That's a very impudent boy. A regular little girl to dig up, my dear. Well, Antoine. What have you been up to all these years? My dear, it's proof of what you have been up to that we are here to talk about. I've been watching you, my dear. I'm a faithful old body, and I've kept my eye on you. I went to your first exhibition, my dear. I found it charming. There was an interior of Moir's main house. Very English, very correct, but quite delicious. Charles has done something, I said. Not all he will do, not all he can do, but something. Even then, my dear, I wondered a little. It seemed to me there was something a little gentlemanly about your painting. You must remember, my dear, that I am not English. I cannot understand this keen zest to be well-bred. English snobbery is even more macabre to me than English morals. However, I said, Charles has done something delicious. What will he do next? Imagine then my excitement at luncheon today. Everyone was talking about you. How you'd broken away, my dear, gone to the tropics, become a, a Gauguin, a Rambo. You can imagine how my old heart leapt. Poor Cecilia, they said. After all she's done for him, he owes everything to her. It's too bad. And with Julia, they said. After the way she behaved in America, and just as she was going back to Rex. But with the pictures, I said, to tell me about them. Oh, the pictures, they said. They're m most peculiar. Not at all what he usually does. Very forceful, quite barbaric. I call them downright unhealthy, said Mrs. Stuyvesant in Oaklander. Oh, my dear, I could hardly keep still in my chair. I wanted to dash out of the house, leap into a taxi and say, take me to Charles's unhealthy pictures. Well, my dear, I went. And what did I find? I found a very naughty and successful but practical joke. It reminded me of the dear Sebastian, when he liked so much to dress up in false whiskers. It was charm again, my dear. Simple, creamy English charm. Playing tigers. You're quite right. Of course I'm right, my dear. I was right years ago. More years, I'm happy to say, than either of us shows. But when I warned you, I took you out to dinner to warn you of charm. I warned you expressly and in great detail of the flight family. Charm is the great English blight. 
It does not exist outside these damp islands. It spots and kills anything it touches. It kills love. It kills art. And I greatly fear, my dear Charles, that it has killed you. It's nice seeing you again, Anthony. I've got to go. I've got a train to catch. Dommage. I so enjoy our little talks together. A bientôt, Charles. Don't be a tease, Tony. Buy me a drink. Hmm?